Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Dave here with Go Gamers, and today we got a Nintendo Switch on the repair bench that is not docking at all, but it fully charges, everything works, just doesn't dock. So let's go over to the repair bench and see exactly what we got going on today. All right, so as you guys can see, we have a regular Nintendo Switch. I already have it open. I wanted to do some testing with you guys. I already tested the charger port. Nothing is wrong with this charger port. I tested it. I checked the pins. Everything is good on that charger port. So that means it's more than likely going to be one of these chips here on this motherboard. So I want to go on ahead and test out these chips. So if you are looking at this board, here is your... HDMI IC, sorry, here's your um, USB-C, and here is your BQ chip. Now, your BQ chip does work with power management and work with um, the USB-C. So, let's go ahead, let's do some testing. So, I got my black probe on ground. I just got it sitting on top of the, the um, USB-C. Um, doing some testing. This, tip, this chip tests out perfectly fine. So I don't see anything wrong with the BQ chip. Now we're gonna test out the M92. So I got my black probe still on ground out on a USB-C. Nothing wrong with this. This diode right here, well this little cap right here, controls the PC13 chip, which is the USB controller, which sits on the back of this motherboard. So let's go ahead and test this one out. So I'm actually getting a short here. So I got my, so I have just a regular multimeter. I have it in, I had it in continuity mode, meaning when I touch something and if it grounds out, it's going to give me a beep. It's giving me a beep on a PC-13 side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fully take this out and I'm going to put this board in my... I don't know if you guys ever saw my PCB board. Hold on, I'll show you guys over here on the upper cam. My Omnivice, everything that I use is linked in the description. So I'm going to take out this motherboard, put it in here. We're going to run further tests on that PC-13 chip. If it is that PC-13 chip, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. So let's get this fully disassembled and see exactly what's going on with this. So now what we're going to do is now that I got the board underneath the microscope and on my Omnivice PCB board holder, I'm going to take um, what's known as Kapton tape. This is a heat reflected. I'm going to put it around this chip. As you can see, it's right here underneath the microscope. I'm going to place this around the chip to protect all the components around it so we could be able to apply some heat and some flux to be able to get this chip lifted off the board. All right, so I have my Kapton tape now placed all around the PC-13 chip. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Amtac 559 Flux, go back on the camera, and I'm going to apply it around this chip. So now that we got that applied around there, now it's time to move on to the next step. All right, so now I got my Tular heat wand. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can be able to see that right here. I got it turned on 440 at 40%. You can see I got my Tular station set right here. And going back under the mic microscope, I'm gonna allow my Tular heat wand to heat up to 440 at 40%. Now, if you wanna know what, what I mean by 40%, 40% is the airflow that I have 440 at and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off at that I have my angle I'm gonna use my angle tweezers for this one and I'm gonna have my fume extraction zone and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some heat to this chip and we're gonna lift it straight off the board
All right, so I have the old PC 13 chip off. I had a couple caps move around a little bit, even with the cap time tape on there. It's always a risk, obviously, when you're working on any type of chip next to a lot of components. But what I'm doing now is I'm just applying a little bit of flux onto here. There's really no need for me to go in and to apply new solder right now, but what I do have is another PC-13 chip. And this PC-13 chip actually came from a donor board. So we're going to make sure all the pads is lined up. And we're going to flow it directly onto the motherboard. And how I do it is, is once it's flowed onto the motherboard, I go around it, I do a thorough check, and if anything needs to be soldered on there, then I take my solder iron and I solder it. But usually with these small chips, you're usually good, but we'll see. All right, I got my Tular heat wand. I said got the airflow at 440. I mean, sorry, I got the airflow at 40%. I got the heat at 440. I'm going to allow it to heat up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to barely touch the chip with my tweezers allow it to flow onto the pads and once i see it's flowing to the pads i'm going to remove the heat and we're going to do one more step after that which i'm going to show you guys here shortly so we're going to slowly flow this on here all right so as you can see we Looks like we flowed everything into place. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt my PCB board holder. Let's see if a different light will help. I'm going to make sure they're lined up with the pads, which it looks like they're, looks like they are. Let's check this side over here. All right, so I just checked it. Looks like we got to move it around. We got to adjust it just a tad bit. I'm going to apply a little bit more flux. And I'm going to come back once we got it fully adjusted. So should be able to get it flowed into place this time. We have the PC-13 chip flowed into place. I applied a little bit more flux. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my solder wire. And the type of solder that I use is linked down below in the description. And what I'm going to do, let's actually start off on upper cam. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to, tin, I'm just going to touch it, tin my solder tip a little bit. And we're going to go directly under the microscope. So I'm going to show you guys under the microscope too what that will look like. So touch it just a little bit. So, it, so I can tend it and we're just going to go around this chip and make sure all the solder is on there perfectly. So that was a big solder ball right there. So this is going to take a little bit of work. All right, so I went around it, made sure everything was soldered correctly. Now, the, the tricky part is trying to get solder right under this cap, right on these pads over here. Um, I'm going to double check to make sure everything is soldered down correctly. Sometimes I actually have to remove this cap right here just to get to these pads over here. Now, let's hope that's not the case. If it is, then... We'll go on ahead and do that next, but I'm just I, what I did was I dipped my toothbrush in 99% IPA, and I'm just going around this chip and cleaning it up now. So I'm just going to clean it up so I can look at all the pads just to make sure everything is soldered correctly, and whatever is not soldered correctly, I'm just going to go back and hit it again with some more solder and my solder iron.
All right, guys. So I went over, I checked everything out. All the pins, everything looked like it's down on the pad. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this back together. We're going to test it, make sure it works. And if it works, then we can give the customer a call and go from there. So let's get this put back together. All right, guys. So we're back. It is now day two. Yesterday, I just had a bunch of stuff going on. So I had to come back in terms of a lot of stuff going on. Also, lost my mic clip. So my mic is dangling from my shirt, if you notice that. But I have the Nintendo Switch fully all put back together. I actually had a extra um, docking station over here for the Nintendo Switch. So as you guys can see, I'm going to go over to the upper cam just so you can see what we're working with. Nintendo Switch. And... I want to power this so, so I press the power button. Let's head over to the game cam. Oh, and it turns straight on. Um, this is not, we was not able to get this previously. And as you can see, we now have, uh, and I just undocked it, and I'm going to redock it just to make sure it pops up. And, and yeah, they didn't bring their Joy-Con, so, um, but, I mean, it wasn't doing this, and, um, now it's on here. The green light is on. So looks like everything is good to go with this chip. Now I want to let you guys know too, if you did watch this repair video and, and you're at the end right now, make sure when you do do this repair, you test the BQ chip, you test the M92 chip, and you also test that P13 chip because it could also be multiple of those chips. There, there's been a couple times where I actually had to replace the M92 and the P13 chip as well so and, and there was a couple times where I, I on the off chances i might have to replace the bq chip that's a little bit less than the m92 and the uh, p13 chip now i also want to say too if you do test everything out and everything tests out fine i would just go ahead and just replace the m92 chip if everything is tested out fine there's no shorts or anything i find a lot of times where i will test every single thing on the motherboard did I just say forget it? I replaced the M92 chip and that ends up being the entire problem the whole time for whatever reason. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. But besides that, I hope to catch you guys on the flip side. See ya.